sick of trying hacks that don't work? Well, you don't have to worry because the tips and tricks I'm about to show you are foolproof. Hi, I'm Sana, and I'm part of the Vibe team at Canva, working in workplace experience. How good are hacks? When they actually work. I love discovering new ways to do things, especially when they save time. If you're new to Canva, buckle up, because I've got a ton of cool things to show you. And if you're a seasoned user, get ready to learn some new tricks too, because I'll be showing you 10 impressive features that most people don't know about. All right, let's start by exploring the elements panel. One of the best things about Canva is how many different elements and styles there are. Like there are hundreds of thousands to choose from. Let me show you some filtering techniques you may not be aware of. Here's a card I'm making for Mother's Day. To finish it off, I need one more flower, and I want it to be red. Instead of scrolling through all these results, I'll click this icon and select the red swatch. To reduce it even further, I can hit this button to take out photos and animations. Now it's easy to choose the exact right option. Before we move on, I have three more tips to help you find the most suitable elements for your design. Whenever you add an element, magic recommendations will appear underneath. Click See More and you'll get a range of options with a similar style. Another way to find complementary elements is to click on these three dots. Then hit See More like this. In the same panel, you can find the name of the designer and see more of their work by clicking the link. This can really help you create a cohesive style. These flowers are actually part of a collection. So hit the View Collection option and you'll see everything. You can also save images to a folder or star them for later. Yep, I'm definitely saving some of these for later. If you'd been wondering how to add a gradient, you are not alone. Gradients are a great way for creating interest and directing the eye to focal points. You can find those in Elements too. Just search Gradient, select Graphics, and you'll have a range of options to choose from. I'll apply this one and change the colors up here. You'll see that this one has three colors that it graduates between. Some gradients only have two, and some have even more. Play around with different color combos or pick some swatches from the palette here. You can also adjust the transparency and flip it to change the direction. There, perfect. Did you know Canva has a number of tools to convert data into graphic displays? This can be a great way to get across complex information quickly and in a beautiful way. Check out some of the ones I've included here. There's a donut chart, line chart, and bar chart. There's even some pictograms. Let me show you how to make them. Search charts, then click see all. Select it, resize it, and change the colors up the top. Over here, you can adjust the number of items, how many are filled, and the spacing between each. Now I'll show you how to make one of these progress rings. I'll head back over to charts. Add it, resize it, and make adjustments over here. I can click on these to change the appearance and slide this bar to adjust the percentage. Once I'm happy, I'll resize it, add the percentage underneath and a symbol for the center. 
Okay, now it's time to check out some other features that live outside the Elements panel. Let's start with a handy text effect. Want to know the quickest way to create a button or background for your text? Instead of placing a shape underneath, you can simply add a text effect. Let's say I want this to look like a button. All I have to do is click here, go to Effects, then hit Background. I can drag these sliders to make the corners round or square and change the thickness. This little trick creates a visual hierarchy and helps the text stand out from the background. This next one's a beauty, especially for something like a resume. If you want to impress any potential employer, just add hyperlinks. They'll love you for it. I'll copy this first, then head up here to the link icon. Now I can paste it in and hit done. It's that simple. You can even add an email address so it autofills whenever someone clicks it. Since we're on the topic of impressive work practices, let's move on to the recording studio. If you're a teacher or presenter of sorts, I can't recommend this tool enough. It allows you to pre-record a video of yourself talking through each slide of the presentation. To get started, hit Share, Present and Record. Then go to Recording Studio. Before you hit this button, you may need to allow microphone and camera access. When you're done, hit End Recording, then Save and Exit. If you're not happy with the recording, you can discard it and try again. Now your video is embedded into the presentation and people can watch it anytime. To view and share the recorded version, go back into here, then Copy Link. You also have the option of downloading or deleting the footage. I'll briefly show you what it looks like in play mode. Before we move on, I wanna show you another tool that adds value to any presentation. You can turn any page into a giant whiteboard by right-clicking on the background, then selecting Expand to Whiteboard. This allows you to add sticky notes and mind maps to stimulate interaction and group work. And there are some great design thinking templates you can add too. Share the document with people here and they can jump straight in with you and start working on solutions together. When you need things to line up perfectly or you're creating a repeated pattern, don't look past the alignment tools. To set up some page guides, go to File, then Show Rulers and Guides. Now you can add as many guides as you like by clicking and dragging them into position. To create this design, I use the guides to divide the page into quarters. I added the heart and duplicated it three times. Then I roughly spaced them out like this. After selecting them, I hit Position and Tidy Up. Then copy the group two more times. Now I have this basic pattern. I can duplicate it over and over to create a more detailed design. All right, are you ready for some time-saving shortcuts? Before we go any further, I'd love to know which tip you're keen to try out. How many did you already know? Let me know in the comments. It can be tricky to select the layer you want if it's closely surrounded or sitting behind others. Like this, for example. Say I need to select the yellow shape underneath the blue one. On a Mac, hold down Command and click until the layer is highlighted. It's the same for Windows, except you hold the control key instead. 
This next tip is a game changer for editing PDF documents when you don't have the original. Let's say I want to rearrange the layout of a newsletter. I can drop the file directly onto the home page and it'll automatically upload. Next, I'll click to open it. Not only does it recognize text boxes, but elements as well. I can move them around, change the text, and delete parts I no longer want. And now it's time for the final tip. This has got to be one of Canva's best kept secrets because it lives in the learn section in Canva's website. If you're in need of some color inspo or can't decide what'll work well together, head on over to the Canva color pages. Here you'll find a color palette generator, ideas, and even color meanings. I'm going to focus on the color wheel. You can pick a color by dragging this circle around or enter the color code here. If you want to see three colors, go to the drop down box and hit triadic. Let me show you what I designed using this combo. Pretty cool, huh? Now it's over to you to get your hack on. Enjoy! If you love this video, please give it a like so others will see it. And don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on all things Canva. Let me know in the comments if there are some hacks I should do another video about.